like many of you guys, I don't have a real shop. I actually just work out of my two-car garage. Making the situation even more difficult, my husband's actually a really handy guy too, and so we're always fighting over space. I've been dying for a second workbench that I can use as an assembly table when I build furniture. Between the tools, the bikes, the leaf blowers, I thought there was just absolutely no room for another bench. But then I got a little creative and decided, what if I made a collapsible workbench? I was tossing around ideas and then one of my followers on Instagram, E Woodworking, sent me a really great jumping off point. There was a folding table base design in an April 2012 issue of Popular Woodworking Magazine. I used the basic design, but I made a few modifications that made it stronger and easier to use. So if space is an issue for you in your shop as well, keep watching and learn how to make your own collapsible workbench. The first thing I did was cut all my 2x4 pieces to size. You can use either a circular saw or a miter saw. Whatever you choose, just make sure that your cuts are nice and square. I've left a link in the description box below with the full building plans, including cut lists and all the measurements. Once everything was cut, I started to assemble. First, I attached the top and bottom rails of each end panel to the legs. I made sure to pre-drill to help avoid splitting. I end up building a lot of my bigger projects on the floor. I actually have a set of knee pads that I use just to make it a little more comfortable. But hopefully after finishing my bench I won't need to do that so much. I want to thank the Home Depot for sponsoring this video and letting me try some cool new tools that are part of the Prospective program. With the boxes square, next came the top and bottom plates. To attach the hinges, I needed to make a mounting board. I cut a 1x3 the same length as the legs. I then made markings designating where the 2x4 cross pieces would be, and then I notched them out with my jigsaw. I placed the mounting boards on the inside of the frame and attached them using 2 inch screws. To attach the support arms that connect the ends together, I used 3 inch utility hinges. I wish they were a little sturdier, but when you need to buy so much hardware it can add up quickly. And the ones that I used were really inexpensive and they actually do the job pretty well. Next, I needed to cut the plywood support arm for the middle. If you don't have a large vehicle or are uncomfortable ripping down plywood yourself, I would recommend asking somebody at your local Home Depot to cut your sheet down for you. It's really not difficult though. All you really need is a circular saw, and I like to use a piece of foam insulation underneath for support. I've been using my new brushless circular saw from Ryobi. It's cordless, so that means it's really simple to use. I just pick it up and I can go. And because it's brushless, it should last me for several more projects down the road. I attached the large plywood support arm in the middle just like I did with the others, only making sure that the hinges were on the opposite side. With each end panel complete, it was time to join them together. This step would definitely be easier if you had an extra hand, but I made it work with a couple of clamps.
To connect the support arms together, I used medium duty strap hinges, like the kind you would see on a gate or a fence. Once again, always remember to pre-drill. The original design called for hook and eyes to prevent from movement, but I wanted something a little bit more sturdy. For just a few dollars more, I picked up some sash locks. They're the kind that you use to hold your window shut. They may look a little intimidating, but they're actually really easy to attach, and they are super strong. At this point, I put my worktop on the frame and I was a little disappointed how wobbly it still was. So I made some modifications. I cut two lengths of two by two to fit snugly between the legs horizontally. And then I clamped them in place. Reaching from the underside, I pre-drilled and attached the two by twos to the plywood top using two inch screws. This accomplishes two things. First, it reinforces the plywood top and prevents sagging. And second, it helps to strengthen the sides and prevent the frame from collapsing when you don't want it to. The 2x2 runners actually also work to help to prevent the top from sliding side to side, but there wasn't anything in the design to prevent the top from sliding forward or backward. I decided to add some removable dowels to the top of the frame. They'll work as alignment pegs to get the top where it needs to be and then they'll prevent the top from sliding around. I decided where I wanted my dowels to go and then I transferred that measurement to the workbench top. Once the top was marked, then I could remove it and bring those markings all the way down the side of the frame. All that was left was to drill the holes and then add half inch dowels. The ability for the workbench to roll isn't just convenient, it actually really aids in being able to collapse and open up the frame. The three inch casters I picked up were really easy to attach to the bottom of the frame. I just pre-drilled and then secured using one and one quarter inch screws. Since my goal is more organization, I decided I should probably clean up my workspace before I set up my new bench. I think I have a little bit of a sawdust problem. So I got to try out my new favorite toy. It's called the Devourer. It's a cordless sweeper made by Ryobi and it's freaking awesome. It's lightweight, it's easy to use, and it picks up almost everything. Not only sawdust, but screw or splinters or even pretty big cutoffs. I can get a little lazy after finishing a big project and the idea of sweeping my garage sounds terrible, but the idea of pushing this around isn't quite so bad. Okay, now what you're really here for, setting up the bench. I know, it's hard to believe that a collapsible bench would be sturdy, but it really is. With the modifications I made, I feel very comfortable working on this. I have no excuse not to clean up my work area anymore. And hopefully I won't need those knee pads quite so often. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. And as always, make sure to subscribe.